Good afternoon to everybody. First of all, I would like to thank you, the organization, uh, to, for inviting the Air Force to come here to share uh, our experience in Lynn. This is the agenda of uh, my briefing. This is the, the line of time of our experiences in the Air Force regarding Lean and the areas we have applied this methodology. Uh, we started with the, with the F-16 modernization. We had a lot of uh, initiatives in the F-16 area, but also we had uh, experiences in other areas. And now we are working on the implementation of a shared support services uh, in the Air Force. So, uh, starting with the, the, the F-16 modernization, uh, the starting point of this, uh, this modernization uh, was uh, uh, we had two, two squadrons uh, that, that uh, to, to modify, to be modified. One of them was a flying, uh, flying squadron, and the second squadron was bought uh, in a preserved condition. The task was to, um, to bring all these airplanes to uh, a common configuration with the EPAF countries and uh, sustain operation. This was a huge, a huge, uh, huge task. Uh, that invo modernization involved uh, avi new, new avionics, uh, structural enhancement programs. And uh, in 2003, we had the first MLU aircraft flying. But this program was uh, threatening to derail. The goal was to have one aircraft uh, modified each two months. And out of this production line, we were able to get one or two aircrafts per year in the, in the first five years. We had a serious trouble. So what to do? We decided to have a different approach to this, to this uh, program and to apply Lean. Apply Lean to, um, uh, to, get more, uh, to get processes more efficient. To, to remove from these processes all the non-adding uh, value tasks. And uh, the first, the first uh, initiative was at Airbase number five, where we, were, uh, we had installed the, the, the so-called TOC4. What we did, using Lean, the, using Lean we uh, decided to establish uh, in this uh, area uh, a cell concept. Four cells were established in this modification area, the air base number five. But besides that, some other measures were taken. For example, the materials, the equipments, the tools were approached to the mechanics. The mechanics were going back and forth to pick up materials, to pick up uh, tools. So we put this, all this stuff here to them. Uh, we start acquiring kits of consumables and not buying isolated items. And we supplied them kits of consumables. We decided to uh, establish a permanent team that was uh, reinforced whenever there was a, a more demanding task. This team was a, were, a, were a, a seven or five, uh, eight people, the permanent team. Uh, we start looking into uh, uh, evaluating better the implementation of uh, time, con time compliance technical orders to see if it's used, if it was uh, opportune to uh, implement them in the, this modification process or do it later. We promote uh, versat versatility of the teams and teamwork uh, and try to uh, dissuade them to uh, think as specialists. We in the Air Force have specialists. 
So everybody is specialist in something, and we try to uh, fade out this, this way of thinking by uh, in, uh, um, promoting teamwork. We emphasized standard work. We established visual management of this production process. The results are what you can see in this graph. In the, far, in the first five years, we got, we, we spent around 78, seven, uh, 278 days to modify one aircraft. And after lean, we managed to reduce the number of days per aircraft. And we finally, in 2009, got the six aircraft per year that was the goal. But this, this graph only says something about delivery timeliness. It doesn't say anything about the morale, about the human resources the morale. And that I can talk and say what I saw. Because I was there in 2010, from 2008 to 2010, I was the Retroavionics Squadron Commander. And what I can tell you is that these guys had, uh, had um, a hell of a life. That, that means they were relaxed. Whenever I needed to change one of my guys that was, was at Dock 4, it wanted one to come out. <laughs> but a lot of guys wanted to come in. <laughs> so there, is, there was always a, a serious uh, discussion how to, to, to solve this problem. So not only we were able to reduce the time, but we, have, we managed to add satisfied people working there, okay? Getting things more efficient. Uh, having said that I was in uh, uh, base number five, I cannot resist to show my squadron. This was one of the contributions of my squadron to the modernization of the aircraft. This is the electrical, the electrical sector. In this electrical sector, we modified all the panels and matrices of 40 aircraft. This, these contracted guys uh, were happy working here in this, this 6S environment. In this, in this room, in each, in each working place, there was only the things, the materials, the tools, the documents that were being used in the task they were executing at the time. Visual management was in place. I could enter this room and understand without asking anybody what was being done in each, in each working position. What is this guy doing? He's doing this, okay? What tool is missing? Oh, this one, or being used. Okay? Everything was visually managed, okay? In a 6S environment, not forgetting, of course, safety, okay? We were, there were in place some routines to keep this uh, environment at this high quality level. Every day at the end of the, of the working day, the, the work was altered a little bit earlier for these guys to clean and tie their, their room and their working position. This routine was implemented every day. Every week there should be an audit run by themselves to see what you think of the, of the tidy, the room is tidy, is something that we can improve here. Every week they will do this exercise, okay? And this way we could keep this working at this high quality standard. But if you think that we moved from one aircraft to six aircraft per year, just because we had a lean event in the dock four and the airbase number five, that is misleading. Because the success of getting from one aircraft to six aircraft, it's, it, it was uh, due to the work that was done in all the processes that contributed to the end result. And that's the add up of all the gains that we got in all the processes, that was what uh, let us reach that, that goal. One of the processes that we worked on was the uh, supply chain of the F-16. Uh, 
to start doing, doing this work, the first thing we do, we did, was to uh, discuss with the command what is the scope, what is the reason to action, what are the sub-processes on the process we are going to work on, what are the gains that we want to achieve. This was a previous discussion with the command, and the command after will tell this team, this is what we want to achieve. Please work on that direction. Doing that, we started building the teams. And how we build the teams? We build the teams uh, looking into all the entities that touch the supply chain um, of, the, the, of the aircraft. Doing the CPOC analysis, it's a helpful tool to understand who should be in the team. And who should be in the team? The ones that touch the process, the, an outsider, a lean facilitator, and of course the most important one, the client. Because the client is the one that decides, that defines what is value. And value is um, what is willing to pay. A physical change done, at first, done uh, right at first time. This is value. And having the, the, the team uh, constituted, we started uh, looking at how we do things today. And to understand that, we use the velocity mapping, it's this was that you see here. This is the velocity mapping of the supply chain of the F-16s end to end. Since there is a need for a part, till the part is, is handed to the client in um, the right part is handed to the client in good condition when he needs it, okay? So end-to-end -end analysis. To do this, while doing this analysis, we are training the team. Train the team in the lean concepts, in the lean principles. What is the client? What's the client meaning? What, what adds value? What doesn't add value? What is uh, waste? What is just in time? Teach them the principles and the concepts of Lean. Training them for, 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 for them to design the future state. How to do is in, efficient, in a more efficient way, okay? This is the, the preparation phase of the Lean event. It takes around one month, uh, one or two days per week, uh, that we are, are busy doing this, this preparation, okay? Uh, after doing this, this preparation, after, understa after understanding how things are, doing, uh, are done today, we are able to move to the future state. And to improve the future state, we run what we call the rapid uh, improvement event. The rapid improvement event is a five-day full-time uh, work where the team designs the future, uh, station, uh, future state, obtains the validation of the command, command accepts it, uh, the, the future state proposed, and two days to implement and debrief, okay? And uh, the supply chain of the F-16 changed a lot. You cannot imagine how it, can, how it changes. One of the things that changed was we removed from the supply chain the main, the central uh, warehouse of the Air Force. The, the, the tools and the parts started going uh, abroad from airbase number five and getting to airbase number five directly. And that saved us 30 days in turn, turnaround time, just for, for removing the, the, the depot. Then we implemented um, uh, a Kanban, Kanbans for, for the, the consumables. 10 Kanbans were built for the consumables. To, do, to build this um, Kanbans uh, for 80% demand, for 80% demand, what, what did, you do? Did, did we do? We looked into data, two or three years data. We understood what are the top 20 uh, malfunctions what line articles were applied to these to this malfunctions. We made a, a Pareto analysis of that, and out of that we got 
what lines are, uh, line, uh, article lines are contributing to 80% of cons uh, demand, um, consumable demand. And out of that, uh, using this figure, we um, establish the, the inventory of these uh, Kanbans and the stock level, taking into account the restocking frequency. Okay? Uh, at the same time, we build at the, the central, uh, the, the, um, the main warehouse at the supply squadron, um, at the duplication of the, of the campaigns. Of course, here, we, uh, the, the stock was for three months and three months reserve, taking into account that three months was, was a, more or less the time to restock the, the items. Okay? So we build a picking cell in the warehouse, and the mechanics that were moving back and forward, and they have huge stocks of consumables in their sectors, they, start, they stopped <coughs> requesting these items because these items were flowing to them, to their working places. And the time they were wasting with this uh, red, red tape uh, paperwork, they used to repair aircraft, okay? This is uh, the, an example of the campaigns. This is how we started. This is how we how is today, okay? So the mechanic just have to pick up the item, apply it, and respect the standard work established. That's what he has to do. And uh, the staff and the, the restocking of these this, uh, Kanbans uh, are made by a milk run process instead of having everybody moving back and forward, okay? At the same time, we established transfer areas. These transfer areas were used to uh, take uh, to the supply chain and uh, to the um, uh, supply squadron and from the supply squadron equipment and parts. And this milk run do it also. And the mechanics stop going to the supply, supply uh, squadron, go back and forward. They use that time to do what they were uh, teach to do, to repair equipment, to repair aircraft. Okay? This is how it is now, the uh, warehouse at uh, the, the supply squadron in the Bay of, Air Base number five. All this was possible. All this was possible because someone brought this new, new way of managing a fleet to the Air Force. This was possible because the Air Force understood there was a problem, there was a gap. And that uh, gap was clear to everybody. And through all the chain of command, everybody knew that there was a problem. And everybody was compromised to build more efficient, simple, out-of-the-box processes that can do can expedite things. And with the adapt of this all, all of all this effort, we managed to get from one aircraft to six aircraft modified by year per year. Here is the um, this is the, the control board of the maintenance and modernization of the aircraft, and also the control of the process of selling the, the fleet to Romania in the uh, weapon system and maintenance directorate. Everything was uh, managed visually, not inside the computer, not in the, in the head of, uh, of the chief. Visually, so that everybody knew what was happening. And from the main responsible to the less important uh, guy in this room, he knew to answer what was going on. Because it was there. Everybody knew. But we applied lean not only to aircraft, not only to maintenance, not only to the F-16, not only to sortie generation, but also in the, uh, in the support and in the admin processes. 2014, the, um, 
the chief of staff decided to have an alien assessment to the Air Force because uh, there was a huge reduction of uh, budget and a huge reduction of um, uh, personnel, military and civilian, and a, a huge decrease in flying hours. And they needed to uh, increase the uh, number of flying hours because if an Air Force doesn't fly, there is no need for them, for that, for the Air Force. Okay? So he decided to uh, look into the processes and decided to look specially into the support. You want the support uh, more uh, efficient and done with less people so that we could fly more, okay? And he decided to implement a, a shared support service in the Air Force. How we do support in the Air Force traditionally? Traditionally, the support to the military is dispersed dispersed by different, by, by different entities in, in this silo type, of, silo type of organization. If I need a paper stating that I'm a military because I want, I'm a student and I want to give, give this paper to my school saying I'm a, I'm a military, I have to go to the human resources, fill in the paper, someone will type it, and this paper goes through the chain of command till the commander, and then comes back to the, to the human resource squadron. They will call me, and I will get, have to go there to pick it up. This will take off a day, one day, two days. That's how, that's how it works traditionally. If I need to buy a piece of, uh, of uniform, I have to go to a different, air, to a different uh, structure. I have to go to the... To the um, supply squadron. If I need to have uh, else reimbursement, I have to go to admin squadron. So everything is dispersed in this silo type of organization. And this all, uh, each of these uh, silo type of organization has its own uh, customer services staffed waiting for someone to go there and ask something. What we are implementing, something different a new concept, a, sh a, support, a shared support services. How is, this going to be, how is this being implemented? It's being implemented with three levels. The first level is the online support. Online support. This online support is on online self-service where the military can access and have information regarding supporting support and requesting things to the um, to the administration, to the, to the support uh, services. If he's is, if is not able to find the answer to his question, he has a, a contact center that will help him to find the answer in the self-service. If the answer is not there, then the contact center, if he knows the answer, will answer the, the military. But if he doesn't know the answer, then he will reg register the question Send it to the experts that will analyze the answer, uh, the, the question, elaborate the answer, return it to the, central, to the contact center that will communicate the answer to the question, uh, the question to the military. Okay? This, this process is, uh, is uh, closed when the contact center registers the answer for continuous improvement purposes. At the local level, we are implementing what we call the uh, airman, airman shop, like uh, Loja do Cidadão. So in this airman shop, we have all, all the support that the military needs that requires its presence. But if it didn't need to be present, we can get the support on his uh, working position tomorrow at home or in the uh, Republica Centrafricana, where, where, where he is. Okay? This is what we are, are implementing. This is the self-service uh, that is accessed uh, via the internal uh, network um, page of the, the, the Air Force. This, uh, these are the, the, the areas that we have now available. 
more have to come to this, uh, to this, uh, have, have to be to be to be brought to this to this support. We are working on that direction. Uh, this is the human resources area where the military has uh, several uh, different requ requests it can make to the administration, to the, the services. Now, that declaration that I told you before is available in, six sec in five seconds with a, um, with a number, uh, with, a, with a code and instructions for my school to check if via the external uh, page, or the external Air Force page, if this document is authentic or not. Okay. Now, this document is available in my desk. I can print it, I can add it to, to my email and send it to whoever I want. Okay. Now, I can access to my personal information at my desk, in my computer, without having to go to the human resources, fill in a paper, asking permission to see my data, get the needed clearance, and then wait for the service to print it out and call me, it's okay, you can come and take it. Then I'll go to the services and there I have the paper. What a waste, what a waste. Or saying it in another way, what a huge improvement opportunity we have here, <laughs> okay? Uh, so the guys that don't think lean applies to admin processes, I would say, can't you see the waste on the process? Can't you see the waiting, the defects, the overprocessing, the overproduction, the transportation, the movement to wastes of a, line, of a production line in this process? You just have to be trained to uh, figure them out. That's what we do with our teams. We train them to figure them out when we uh, have that preparation phase for the lean events. Okay. This is the contact center at Alfragil. This is what he has to do. This is the uh, airman shop at Alfragil. Today, if I go to this uh, shop and I want to renew my health card, and I get there, and I don't have the, the form filled in, it will tell me, look, come here to the kiosk. Come here to the kiosk. Log in in your uh, self-service. It's here. Just click it here. It's filled in. You just have to sign it and give it to me. It's done. Okay? Because we are not able yet to have a better solution to this it's not what we want, it's what we have to live to, up to, okay? So the three pillars of this, uh, of this model, self-service, uh, contact center, uh, airman shop. This is the way that we are building to do uh, su uh, support to the military uh, in the Air Force. But we are also working in the support to the subunits and services of the Air Force. And we are, are doing it in a different way, in a shared support service concept. The traditional way is much similar to the uh, military support. Each one of these silo organizations have staff allocated to support the work they do. They have people uh, tasked to pick up stationery, to pick up uh, uh, equipment, to pick up tools. Uh, they have vehicles uh, um, allocated to this task. Everybody is doing support for their, for their uh, squadron. And this is what it looks like. What we are doing is something different now. What we are doing is build a shared service concept. 
This is an example at, uh, at the Alvarez complex. We have around 20 admin areas, because there are a lot of subunits there, 20 admin areas. And all these 20 admin areas had people every day going to the post sector and coming back to the post sector and then delivering mail to go outside, uh, come, going back, back and forward to, um, because of, the, of mail. We have 20 services uh, distributing mail between themselves. What, what we thought to do with our team, the purpose of our, our team was, look, why don't we do like the, post, uh, the postman outside? In my house, the postman gives me the, the mail. I don't go to the post office. So why not build something like that? That's what we did. The post sector that was far away from the clients, we brought it, brought it close to the clients and we built a, a post office. Lean organized, cell organized. We established a postman um, service. And now, twice a day, the postman picks up the mail, goes to the, all the services, uh, gives the mail, picks up what mail is there, and then distributes it immediately, and then in the afternoon, it does do the same, twice a day. Meanwhile, he has, he has uh, a few slots that is waiting for, for do express, express mail. And everything was standardized for, uh, so that the postman that was changing every time know what to do, where to go. And we built in each service a post box where he has to deliver the mail and where he, speak, and where he picks the mail. Okay. Another process that we looked into was the material, the material planning requisition, requisition, and distribution. We looked into that, that, process, that process. And one of the process that we have in our uh, services is the stationary uh, process. Every service needs stationary to work. And how it works traditionally? Well, each service plans what it needs. Every six months, it, made, it, made, it makes a plan, uh, plan. I need X pens, X the pencils, and so on. And each service plans more than he requisites, and requisites more than he needs. And the result is this. Excess stock in each service. Because just in case, let me pile it, maybe I need it. That's how it works traditionally. So what our Lean team thought about this? What solution for this? This is obsolete, obsolete stuff. A lot of money here. So, what to do? Well, let's try to implement a Kemba milk run solution for this. It's simple. It's cheap. It's inexpensive. It's an out-of-the-box solution, we know. But let's try it. And this is what was proposed and implemented in Airbase number five. It's working since 2015. And uh, they looked closely to the consumption of this material because they were afraid this material will, do, will uh, increase uh, consumption. But they concluded, no, it decreased. And all the admin areas, that, that 20 admin areas in the, in the Alfragid that were moving back and forth to pick up mail, to pick up stationery, to pick up catering, to do, to pick up uh, IT uh, consumables, uh, to pick up toners, they st they stop doing it, or will stop doing it, and they will do use that time to do things in their uh, services, and this service can be done with only one one man, with a postman. How is how, how this works? Quite simple. The, the stationery is available to the user. 
It doesn't need to ask anyone. It just has to pick up what he needs and respect the standard work. And this is the standard work for the user. What he needs to do? Well, when he reach the reserve, he has to pick up the card and signal to the milk run, you need to restock pens. Pens in, in this service, in this uh, subunit. How we do it? Well, the, the postman that passes uh, already twice a day in the service is where he has to leave the stationery. Just have to need a barcode reader. And whenever he, dis he distributes the mail, he will um, um, get the, um, the need to replace uh, or to restock items. Okay. How we do it? You just have to read the, the barcode. This barcode will, is written, is uh, encoded. What are the, the item, What is the item he has to replace, to restock? What is the number of items he has to restock, and where he has to restock it? And moving the card to this position is signaling to the user: Look, I've seen already that you need uh, pens. And then and the process of restocking is ongoing. Okay? When uh, this, this need for pens or pencils is going to the warehouse in that uh, uh, barcode reader, the warehouse prepares the picking. And the, the, when the day arrives to deliver these items, the milk can will come with the, with the items will pick up the card with the pens, will put the card and the pens in this position. That's how it works. That's the standard work for the, the, for the restocking. Okay? How we figured out what items we need to put in each, uh, in each Kanban? Well, we looked into the to data. We looked into data from 2016, 2014 till 2016 to understand what is the 80% consumption. What are the items? What are the items that, uh, that represent the 80% consumption? And these are the items that we shall look into and uh, have them there. But this work has to be done with the admin areas to understand if really this is, these are the line articles or if they think we should put more, uh, uh, some items out of the, of the, of the 80%. Okay? That, that's the situation of one of the services in Alfragir. Uh, and this is the value of items we are going to leave there. You, you saw the, the previous uh, image, how, how much was there in, the, in the, that service. Okay? Of course, this is just the starting point. We have to refine this, this analysis and uh, understand what are really the items that represent the 80% consumption. That's the work that has to be done. Just to, rela to relax the admin area, okay, let's put more, more, uh, some more items here. Okay? And the proposal of the team was, look, the postman is sitting in the post office waiting for uh, express mail. He's not busy. So why not to use one of the slots for him to distribute also this material, the stationery and the catering. And the catering. And why not to deliver the uh, IT consumables and the toners via mail? In my house, I can go to Amazon and order CDs or pens. It's, they, they are delivered to my house. So why I cannot order these items and have them delivered by, my, by, by the postman? That's what was proposed. And this way, we can uh, um, optimize one human resource and let 20 people doing something else. OK? 
happen. And this is what we suggested. Why not to have a milk run doing this instead of 20, 20 guys doing this? Okay. How are we, are we uh, let, how we get the teams to uh, propose these uh, innovative and out of the box solutions? Well, uh, changing culture. Changing culture of the organization. And how we do it? Involving people. So, involving people, we are changing culture and building an army of lean thinkers. Of course, we know this changing culture and continuous improvement is not a sprint, but a marathon. That's it. Thank you. Did you see improvements in the variability of the processes? The variation, the, if it was very long and very short, and like a, you have a bunch of processes from the F-16s all the way to the supply chain within the Air Force from overstocked uh, places to uh, continuous delivery almost of materials. Did that reduce the variation, the delta of, of the processes? Or? Well, I'm not understanding what you mean. As in, um, you have someone, you have a mechanic doing a, a, something that is a part. It, and sometimes he took five minutes, and sometimes he took two days because he was waiting for the part. Did that reduce not only just in time, but also in variation, variability, to always be close to the same time? Well, the purpose is to have the part he needs when he needs it. So, uh, just to prevent that variation. That, that's, we are working to the just in time. Yeah. Uh, I can imagine that this implied a very large culture shock within the Air Force, at least initially, uh, because I, I'm assuming that people profited directly or indirectly from the, the efficiencies. So, how, 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 how did you manage to get everyone on board? Of course, maybe because it's part of the military, there's a strict chain of command, and someone says, let's do this. Uh, so as, as someone that sometimes has to effect change on large organizations, that's always a big problem. Well, also in the Air Force is, was a problem. Uh, uh, the Air Force is a hierarchic organization. Uh, we have uh, in the Portuguese Air Force the image of the chief. The chief is uh, like God. He knows everything. If you need to, to understand uh, what, how to do it, you ask the chief. The chief will tell you how to do it. And Lean is not like that. Lean is the chief must know, uh, must ask you the, the right questions for you to reach the solution. And it's your solution, it's not the chief's solution. Okay? Because that's, that's why I told, I, I started this uh, in, the mid, I, in the middle of this uh, presentation, I, I told you that. Um, in the MLU, it, uh, the modernization of the, of the F-16, it was easy uh, to, to get uh, people um, com uh, compromised uh, because uh, everybody knew there was a, a problem and everybody knew that something had to be done and everyone, everybody was aligned with this, uh, with this goal. Changing the, an organization, not always, this, is, this happens. I don't know if I answered your question. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was also difficulties in implementing lean in the Air Force. There is also difficulties. But the, the, but the secret is involve people. Create a bunch of lean thinkers to change this culture. The culture of the chief for the culture of the team working out their solutions. Last question there. Um, and Typically, uh, lean or agile implementations are, are implemented, implemented either top-down or bottom-up. I believe in the, in the Air Force it was top-down, right? Yep. And uh, that, that means that the, the losses uh, have to let go a little bit of, of their authority. Was that a problem? Being military and all? <laughs> uh, 
Well, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. <laughs> when the leader is compromised with the, when the leader understands and they establish the, the, the goal and it is, he knows what he wants, he defines the scope uh, of the event. He says he understands what is the reason to act and establish its own uh, uh, gains and goals. Then we have a little compromise with uh, the lean. And uh, uh, when this happens, uh, the resistance, the resistance that, that are always present in an organization in the intermediate uh, leadership that are responsible for the processes. And they don't want Lynn to go and, and see what, what waste is in their, in, waste is in the, are in their, uh, their process. If the leader is, is compromised, this resistance will, will uh, disappear and we'll have teams working effectively and proposing um, uh, out of the box and efficient solutions. Okay? But if the leader is not compromised with the, the transformation, then it's uh, not worth doing anything. <laughs>